Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God. Welcome back to our presentation sessions in the Word of God. And last time in season one, which was almost a month ago, we covered the sexual demons part one in season one. And in that season, we focused on the spiritual husbands and wives. And we covered the dimension of adulterous marriages, the origin of spiritual husbands and wives. We also covered a dimension of the operations of masturbation, fornication, psychological influence of lust inside the mind. We also covered the hallowed spiritual wife and the fornication seducing spirits. We also covered many other dimensions that concern spiritual husbands and how they operate because it was the subtitle of season one. And today we resume with season two. And in season two, on the sexual demons, in season two, we are focusing on what is called the immoral sins of the flesh. Season two resumes today. And inside season two, under the subtitle of the immoral sins of the flesh, we want to focus on what is called fornication and rebelliousness. It's the resistance and how it causes ignorance and arrogance. So people of God, for us to understand more on season two and this new dimension, which is now part five. Let's get into scriptures. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 12. And it reads, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not necessary. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Anything that is bound to bring you under the power of subjection of whatsoever force is anything that wants to manipulate you, anything that wants to control you, and it can only do so by taming your own mind first before it oppresses your whole body, parts or members, which consist of the legs, the hands, the head and all the other body parts but the whole oppression begins inside the mind know ye not not that your bodies are the members of christ shall i then take the members of christ and make them the members of a hallowed god forbid and in the scripture that i've just read the supposed paul that is explaining about your body members being the members of Christ, knowing very well that this body has been signified and identified by Christ through his word as the temple of God. Therefore, it is a representative member inside the body of Christ, both in the spirit and in the physical. It represents the temple of God. And know ye not that which he that is joined to a hallowed is one body, for two shall be one flesh. You become one body with a hallowed after you are joined to become one flesh. But the question is, why didn't the hallowed become the body of Christ? People of, people of God, this is the area that I want to explain very clearly to you. After I had made my study, after reading the scripture, I asked myself this question in spirit. After one joins his body with the hallowed, why didn't the hallowed become a member of the body of Christ? 
I want to talk about the resistance and the rebelliousness of the spirit and operating demon of fornication to the level that even after one who is prayerful, who meditates in the weight, who does all activities in the body of Christ, has joined his body with that of a harlot. Fornication is the one that consumes, or fornication is the one that colonizes the other world. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Meaning that the body, after joining with that of a harlot, it becomes one flesh, whilst the spirit remains with Christ. And then one gets captivated in the flesh. And what fornication fornication would have done there is to capitalize on your ignorance and arrogance in the flesh or failure to resist that immorality sin so fornication is very rebellious and it is very resistant and in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 it then reads, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that commits fornication sins against his own body. Every sin that a man does is without the body. Which are sins like anger. It is in spirit. You can't be angry using your flesh. There are so many sins that happen without the body being brought into subjection but fornication resists against the body fornication sins against the body and when we are saying fornication sins against the body we are saying fornication it manipulates the body it captivates the body to the level that even while the spirit is still joined to the Lord, fornication can captivate a Christian to be a slave of an immoral sin. And one lives as a slave of fornication while fighting all his or her life to be obedient before the Lord, yet captivated by fornication. What do you know? What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have, which is the Spirit of God, and you are not your own? The Spirit of the Lord remains independent, which is inside you, because it is not captivated nothing can ever manipulate the spirit of god that god invested inside you but the flesh which ought to be managed by self-control and self-control cannot be induced inside your body because of your ill of your arrogance and ignorance Therefore, fornication takes the advantage in the process to then manipulate the body, to resist and fight against your own body, to rebel against your thoughts, to, rege to rebel against all that you desire for the Lord, and it takes over. For we know that the law in the spirit is spiritual, but I'm carnal and sold under sin. Being carnal and being sold under sin is being captivated by the laws of the flesh 
which you all define as the laws of nature, which cause you to question why God would give you the body with lusts, and why those lusts are not supposed to drive you. And then you reason carnally in a dimension that is inspired by the evil thoughts, and you commit fornication. And in Romans chapter 7, verse 16, he then reads, saying, If then I do that which I would not do, I consent unto the law that it is good. If then I do which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. You consent unto the law that it is good because you have justified yourself in doing that which is not good. And you feel good while at least doing it. But the bottom line is that you would have been captivated through your arrogance and ignorance in the spirit. For that which I do, I allow, I allow not in spirit. For what I, I would do, that I do. But what I hate is what I found myself doing once more. So there is a contradiction there of the spirit man and the body fighting a war between the flesh and the spirit and the body that has been joined to a hallowed the body that has committed fornication is captivated by the spirit and remains obedient to christ which is something that is very complicated which needs a deeper analysis of revelation in spirit for one to identify the state that one is captivated under certain certain spiritual circumstances if then i do that which i would not i still consent that the law is good after justifying yourself in that position it means the flesh is the one that would have justified itself in its position while least the spirit is trying by all means to be obedient before the lord for i know that in me nothing is good inside my flesh nothing good dwells inside me for it for to will is present within me but how to perform that which is good i find it not the scripture reads of a spiritual character that is willing to do good but time and again fornication resists with all its mighty power to pull down a man to its subjection of that immorality sin of the flesh and one finds himself committing fornication beyond his or her own will for the good that i would do not but the evil which i would not is what i find myself doing continually doing the same evil practice knowing that it, it is not advisable knowing that it is not good but the body being captivated by the resistance of fornication and also obviously arrogance and ignorance taking the advantage and capitalizing to also captivate the victim now if i if i do that i would not it is no more i that do it but the sin that dwells in me no one is just going to engage into fornication and then say it is no longer i that sin but the sin that dwells in me That scripture has been written on behalf of one that is fully dedicated to the Lord and does not sin intentionally. But no matter how hard he or she tries, he or she still finds himself captivated by the resistance and the rebelliousness of fornication, meaning that one has gone past the level of 
using arrogance or ignorance to be captivated. He is now automatically a slave under fornication and he needs or she needs deliverance with immediate effect before that immorality sin subjects him to destruction. I will then find a new law that when I would do good, evil is present within me. Whenever you do good, you then realize that evil is present within you because it becomes an evident darkness where there is light. All your confessions, all your dedications from the heart, the spirit, are a result of the Lord, but all your actions, all your body actions, they signify an evident proof that you are demonized by fornication that is very resistant and rebellious against what you ought to submit to the Lord. And the Apostle Paul then says, O wretched men that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He reached a point of asking himself that question. And you know why he reached a point of asking himself this question. I'll take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And he is doing a prayer. And he says, Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to perfect me, lest I should be exalted above measure. We have debated with so many to realize which thorn was put inside Apostle Paul's flesh. And many still argue that this thorn was not associated with any arrogant sin or any captivation of any sin that would have taken advantage of the flesh. And he says so many times I pleaded with the Lord before he was told in prayer by the same Lord that my grace is sufficient for you. But my question is, what kind of thorn is this that Apostle Paul pleaded with to the Lord? He pleaded against this thorn in the flesh to the Lord. And the Lord gave him hope that my grace is sufficient. And earlier in Romans, there 